Hey guys, Sci-Fi here. I'm releasing a new version of the Windows USB updater program. So I wanted to do a quick video and explain some of the new features and show you how to update your board at home. Alright, so first of all, if you don't have this program yet, what you need to do is go to the website www.scifi-paintball.com and click on the software update section and this is where you can download the most current version of the software updater program. So once you download that, you really just need to run the program. When we do, it's going to pop up a Windows confirmation because this program runs with administrator privileges all the time. So you don't need to do anything special when you run it, but it is going to pop up that confirmation window. And unfortunately, that confirmation window is not going to show up on this, on this video uh, screen capture software. So I'm going to run it here. It says, do you want to allow this app to make changes to your device? I click yes. And it opens up this splash screen. And then it goes to the main page of the program. So during that splash screen, it's actually installing all of the drivers for the board. So you don't have to do anything special when it comes to installing software or hardware drivers. It does all that automatically uh, when it opens up. Okay, so let me switch off my screen right quick. And we can see the board, it's not plugged in yet. And we can't click on any of these buttons because right now it says board not found. But as soon as I plug in the board, we can see it boot up and now it's showing board found on COM3. So we have two options here. We can auto detect the board or we can manually select the board. You always want to try auto detect first. The manual select is really only for if the auto detect fails. But let me show you what that screen looks like on manual select. We can select which board we have and you need to be really careful doing this because if you install the wrong software on the board it could actually damage the board. So make extra sure that you select the correct board. In this case it's a Shoebox Shocker version 1 board and I can click update and the red light means it's updating the board and when it's done it takes us to this screen here and I'm going to unplug the board real quick so that we can start back at the main screen so like I said you always want to do auto detect first. Manual manual board select is really a last resort. But normally when I plug in the board, I'm going to do the auto detect, the read board. And when I do that, it's going to automatically determine which board we have. And it did. It shows me that I've got a Shoebox Shocker version 1 board. It tells me that my board software is version 3.0, which is actually the most current software and it tells us that our board software is up to date. All right, so here on this this screen, we have a few different options. Right here we're on our update board tab, and this will allow us to update the board. We can either update the board and reset to factory settings, or we can update board but retain custom settings. So if you have different firing modes and stuff programmed into your board if you're if you're doing like 10.2 NXL, you can update your board and not change any of those settings and not, not lose anything that you already have in there. Uh, so we can do either one of those. And then we also have this Edit Settings tab. And on the Edit Settings tab, we can select a setting and we can change it. And what you'll notice is that this window that pops up is exactly the same window that pops up on your Android or Apple app. So the interface is exactly the same as what you're used to. And you can change all of the settings just like you can from the app. We see that these are getting highlighted as I change them. Uh, what you need to note is that every time I change one, I have to hit accept. We can also change settings for different profiles. And we can't even do that on the app right now. So I can change settings for profile 2. I can change settings for profile 5. The one thing I can't do is I can't change the settings on my factory settings. These are locked in. You can't change those. So when we're done changing settings, 
These aren't actually saved yet. We need to send them to the board. And there's this button here, send all settings to board. When I click that, we see the, the light on the board starts going red again, and that means that we're writing to the board. And when it's done, it'll bring us back to the same screen we're already on. It says, write success. Pay attention to the status window here, because that's what's going to tell us if we have a success or a failure. And uh, hopefully you don't see any failures, but uh, it happens from time to time. So we can update, we can change the settings. That's pretty much all of the new features for the, for the program. Oh, one last thing. When we update our board, you never have to go looking for the most current board software. It's always going to pull the current board software from my website. When you click on update board, it's going to download the most current board files so you don't have to worry that you're not downloading the right ones. You just need to make sure that the right board is selected. And then we can update. I'm doing an update and reset to factory settings. It's stormy here if you guys can hear the thunder. All right. So now we're back to our factory settings. Everything's back to normal. And that's about it, guys. I appreciate y'all watching the video. Hopefully this is informative and uh, answers some of your questions. And, uh, yeah, thanks for watching.